Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasadim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter number 10, entitled The Deliverance of the Yamala Arjuna Trees. This morning, text number 20 to 22. We'll read the Sanskrit for text number 20. Yadima loka palashya Putro budva tama pluto Navivasasam atmanam Vigyanita sudurmado Yadimo loka palashya Putro budva tama pluto Navivasasam atmanam Vijanita sudurmado Yad imau loka palashya Putro budva tama pluto Navivasasam atmanam Vijanita sudurmato Adima loka palashya Putro budva tama pluto Navivasasam atmanam Vijanita sedurmadhau Ya ima loka palashya Putro budva tama pluto Navivasa samatmanam Vijanita sedurmadau Yad imau loka palashya Putro budva tama pluto Navivasa samatmanam Vijanita sadurmato Okay, word meaning yet, because, imau, these two young demigods, Lokapalashya, of the great demigod Kuvera, Putrao, born as sons, Budva, being so, they should not have become like that. Tama Plutao, so absorbed in the mode of darkness. Na, not, vivasasam, without any dress, 
completely naked. Atmanam, their personal bodies. Vijanita could understand that they were naked. Sadurmadal, because they were very much fallen due to false pride. Atta, therefore, Arhata, they deserve Stava, Stavarna, Stavaratam, immediately like that of a tree, or immobility like that of a tree. Syatam, they may borrow, they may become. Na, not. Evam, in this way. Yata, as. Puna, again. Smriti, remembrance. Shyat, may continue. Matprasadayana, by my mercy, Tatra Api, over and above that, Mat Anugrahat, by my special favor, Vasudevasya, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sanidyam, the personal association, face to face, Labva, obtaining, Divya Sharat Satevrite, after the expiry of 100 years by the measurement of the demigods. Swarlokatam, the desire to live in the celestial world. Buya, again. Labda Bhakti, having revived their natural condition of devotional service. Bhavishyata, will become. Translation. These two young men, Nala Kuvera and Manigriva, are by fortune the, the sons of the great demigod Kuvera. But because of false prestige and madness, after drinking liquor, they are so fallen that they are naked but cannot understand that they are. Therefore, because they are living like trees, for trees are naked but not conscious, these two young men should receive the bodies of trees. This will be proper punishment. Nonetheless, after they become trees and until they are released, by my mercy, they will have remembrance of their past sinful activities. Moreover, by my special favor, after the expiry of 100 years, by the measurement of the demigods, they will be able to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev, face to face, and thus revive their real position as devotees. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. A, tr a tree has no consciousness. When cut, it feels no pain. But Narada Muni, wanted the consciousness of Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva to continue so that even after being released from the even after being released from the life of trees they would not forget the circumstances 
under which they had been punished. Therefore, to bestow upon them special favor, Narada Muni arranged things in such a way that after being released, they would be able to see Krishna in Vrindavan and thus revive their dormant bhakti. Each day of the demigods in the upper planetary systems equals six months of our measurement. Although the demigods in the upper planetary system are attached to material enjoyment, they are all devotees and therefore they are called demigods. There are two kinds of persons, namely the devas and the asuras. Asuras forget their relationship with Krishna, asuram bhavam ashrita, whereas the devas do not forget. Dvo bhuta sargo lokesmin daivi asura evacha vishnu bhakta smrito daiva asura stad viparyaya from the Padma Purana. The distinction between a pure devotee and a Karma Mishra devotee is that a pure devotee does not desire anything for material enjoyment, whereas a mixed devotee becomes a devotee to become a first class enjoyer of this material world. One who is in direct touch with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service remains pure, uncontaminated by material desire. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma janavritam. By karma mishra bhakti, one is elevated to the celestial kingdom. By jnana mishra bhakti, one is able to merge in the Brahman effulgence. And by Yoga Mishra Bhakti, one is able to realize the omnipotency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But pure Bhakti does not depend on karma, jnana or yoga, for it simply consists of loving affairs. The liberation of the bhakta, therefore, which is, which is called not just mukti, but vimukti, surpasses the five other kinds of liberation. Sayujya, sarupya, salokya, shasti, and samipya. A pure devotee always arranges in pure service, Anya bila sita, anya bila, oh, anuku yena krishna no shilanam bhakti uttamam. Taking birth in the upper planetary system as a demigod is a chance to become a further purified devotee and go back home, back to Godhead. Narada Muni indirectly gave Mani Griva and Nala Kuvera the greatest opportunity by his so-called curse. Omagyana Timaranda Syagyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Unmilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha kaupa tarubhyas cha kripa sindhu bhaeva cha patitanam pavane bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo nama. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we've been hearing Narada Muni analyze the position of Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva. He certainly spent some considerable time considering what was wrong with them. 
and he understood that the problem was they were too much, they had too much money, too much wealth, and because of their wealth, excessive wealth, they become proud. So now he is considering what is the solution. He understood the disease, now how to correct it. As we heard yesterday, the Vaishnava is expert physician. So Narada Muni is considering how to, what is the, the remedy, what's the medicine to cure this disease of Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva. And he considers that the best thing for them is to put them into the bodies of trees. Because they have, they were, they, they were taking the Varuni, the liquor, and they were intoxicated. They had no consciousness, and they were not even ashamed of being naked in front of Narada Muni. So the trees stand naked. Uh, I remember Srila Prabhupada, on one occasion at least, uh, he saw some young woman wearing shorts, you know, they were dressed improperly, wearing some shorts. And Prabhupada said, dress like that, next life they will come as trees. Because they go almost naked, so the trees also stand naked. Of course, in the body of a tree, it's a type of punishment, because the roots are in the ground. So it's like having your feet stuck into the ground. So to be in the body of a tree, we know how the trees have to tolerate the heat and the cold and the wind and the rain and people will come and cut them, break them, take whatever they have, take the, the fruits, if there are any fruits, they'll be taken. So, the trees have uh, a difficult time. So the trees are given very low consciousness and we don't think of them speaking. Although they have their own way of speaking, but it, it's not a manner of communicating like other species of life. It's on a very low level. So Nala, Kuvera and Mani Griva were punished by putting them into the bodies of trees. But the, by the, there, were, there was some special mercy there because Narada Muni arranged that while they would be in the body of the tree, they'd also remember what, was, what had happened and why they were in this condition. We see people, to, we see trees today now the trees that we see, they don't know, they don't remember who they were in their previous life. But Nala, Kuvera and Mani Griva, when they were put into the bodies of trees, they were, by the mercy of Narada, they could remember their previous life. So this was the mercy of Narada Muni. Mercy because in the sense that remembering that they had been demigods and they'd been in a very high position in the material world and now they've been put into the bodies of trees, they can understand that their behavior was very wrong, very improper. And the result was that they got the body of a tree. So similarly, we see in, in human society, they have things like correction institutions or in common language may call them prisons. People are put into some restricted condition. Their, their movements are restricted and they're put into, sometimes even put into solitary confinement, isolation. You cannot move. That's the type of punishment. And Prabhupada also, he, he experienced a little, one time when he was traveling, he'd come back, he'd been in Africa and they came to Bombay 
And when they came to the airport, then the immigration official asked them, where's your yellow fever card saying that you've already been inoculated, you've had the vaccine for yellow fever? And they didn't have it. At least they didn't think they had it. And so then they said, then you have to go in quarantine. Just like nowadays with this COVID-19, people are put into quarantine for 14 days. At that time, Prabhupada came from Africa and there had been yellow fever in Africa. So they said, anybody coming to India without the inoculation for yellow fever, you have to have quarantine for five days. In those days, it was, in, in that time, it was five days for yellow fever. And so Prabhupada and the devotees who were with him, they were all put into quarantine in Juhu for five days. And in some ways, actually, later on Prabhupada remembered that he actually had the yellow fever vaccine and he arranged to get the car, it was in Calcutta, in the Calcutta temple. And they called up Jaipataka Maharaj. Jaipataka Maharaj came to Calcutta, got the card, and immediately took it to Bombay. And immediately Prabhupada was re released. But while he was there, Prabhupada was also explaining how it's, it's very difficult, very painful to be in such a condition, to be restricted, that you're not free to move. No freedom to move. So Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva were in this position and they could remember their life. Just, and we see a similar example with uh, Bharat Maharaj that is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Now Bharat Maharaj had been a great king of the world and he had performed many sacrifices. Srimad Bhagavatam describes how he was a very pious and very religious minded person and executed many different sacrifices for the pleasure of the Lord. Particularly it mentions that when they would offer oblations for the different demigods, at that time Bharat Maharaj would understand that they're actually offering to a part of the body of the Supreme Lord. So worship of the demigods is approved when it's done in the consciousness that the demigods represent a part of the body of the Supreme Lord. So Bharat Maharaj did like that. And after he ruled the world for many years and he was married with five children, but then he renounced everything and he retired to Hardwar, right? Pu, pu, pula Ashram, pula, pu, pu, Puhala Ashram, near in the Hardwar region. So Hardwar, where the Ganga flows. Ajamio also went there to Hardwar before he gave up his life. So Bharat Maharaj, this is in, must have been Satya Yuga or Treta Yuga. Not sure which Yuga, Bharat Maharaj. Anyway, Bharat Maharaj was the son of Rishabdev. So from that time, Bharat Maharaj had gone to Hardwar and he had stayed there. He had gone up to where the Gandaki flows. Gandaki is very sacred of all rivers and it's in the Gandaki that you get the Shaligram Shilas. So the water there is very, very special. So Bharat Maharaj was staying there on his own. He gave up everything. He gave up being the ruler of the world. He left his wife, he left his children, he left the kingdom, everything to go and retire. But when he was in the mountains, while he was doing his meditation and spiritual practice, one day, 
one deer came and the deer was going to cross the river at that time there was a loud roaring of a, a lion and the, the roar was tremendous and hearing that loud roaring of the lion everyone trembled and the deer was also very afraid that this animal was going to come and eat me so the deer jumped across the river but when the deer jumped across the, the river well the deer was actually pregnant and when she jumped across the river at that time she gave birth to a small deer and the small fawn came out from the womb of the deer and fell into the river Ganga and seeing her baby fall into the river Ganga the deer was mortified and the deer went into a nearby cave and gave up her body so Bharat Maharaj had witnessed all of this so he saw the little deer in the water and he thought he should save it he brought it out from the water and he cared for it and he began to feed it little pieces of grass and take care of it and as he watched it grow he became very affectionate to the deer but he became overly affectionate to the deer so much so that he practically forgot about his spiritual practice so Srila Prabhupada explains there how it's all right to it, it, well Srila Prabhupada explains one has to be very careful in getting involved in welfare activities humanitarian work doing things for the benefit of the society you know some people like to do these welfare activities uh, donate food and uh, take care of young children give children books and pens give them clothes and so on he said he said you have to be very careful not to get detached sometimes people are doing these welfare activities and they minimize their spiritual activities so if doing welfare activities causes a disruption to our spiritual practice then it's certainly not good we have to be very careful Bharat Maharaj made a great mistake in becoming overly affectionate to an animal now we cannot expect to give an animal God consciousness we're not so elevated there were some rare souls who could somehow give some spiritual benefit to animals but our real purpose is to give Krishna consciousness to give spiritual education to humans we don't want to spend our whole time thinking about an animal just like people keep dogs they keep their pet dog or the pet cat or some bird or rabbit or something and they become very affectionate to them they become so much affectionate that they forget all about Krishna so this is what happened to Bharat Maharaj he became so much attached to the deer that he'd be doing his meditation he'd be sitting trying to meditate but in his mind he'd be thinking where's the deer where did she go what's she doing so this is not spiritual practice we have to be very careful Srila Prabhupada goes to great depth in the purports in that section of Srimad Bhagavatam warning all devotees you have to be very careful not to waste this opportunity to become Krishna conscious that we've been given this rare chance to become a devotee of Krishna and if we waste it if we become attached to an animal then it's a great shame it's a great 
waste. So, His Holiness Jayadveda Swami, actually when he teaches this section of Srimad Bhagavatam, I heard in Mayapur, he was teaching Bhakti Vaibhav, this section, and he described, he said, today we don't become attached to deers, we become attached to mobile phones, computers, cars, these things. You know, we don't keep a pet deer, but we have many other things to absorb our mind. And the focus of our spiritual practice is taken away from Krishna and put onto some material object. And that's a great waste of our spiritual practice. Sometimes we see devotees chanting, one hand is a big bag, the other hand is a mobile phone. And so the, the concentration is not in the holy name. We have to be very careful to guard against these attachments to material things. Just as we should be very careful also getting overly absorbed in welfare activities. You know, some people are campaigning, save the whales, protect the whales, and save the, you know, don't let people kill the animals save the birds, different things, They're worried about animals going into extinction and so on. This is all welfare, material activities. It's all very well, but our real business is to give people Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada then in the purport, he goes on to talk about how there are different results according to how we practice devotional service. Somebody's devotional service may be mixed with desire for fruitive activities, karma mishra bhakti. So karma mishra bhakti will take us, you do some devotional service, but it's mixed with material desires, will take us to the higher planets. You can go to the higher planets. And if it's Jnana Mishra Bhakti, then you can get impersonal liberation. Sayuja Mukti. And if it's some other kind of bhakti mixed with desire for mystic perfection, different results we see depending on the attitude. Just like some people are very much desirous of liberation. So Yujya Mukti is for the, the Jnana Mishra Bhakti. He may, the Jnana Mishra Bhakta. He may get Sayuja Mukti. He may enter into the impersonal Brahman. The yogis may get full liberation. They may enter Vaikuntha. But the devotee he doesn't just simply want Mukti. He wants Vimukti. Vimukti, complete liberation. And that is achieved by pure bhakti. So Prabhupada quotes the verse given by Rupa Goswami describing pure devotional service. Jnana, karma, ran up. No. Ka How does it go? Um, Janma, uh, let me see, what's the verb? I have to check. Anya Bilasita Sunyam, right, thank you. Anya Bilasita Sunyam, Jnana Karma Janavritam. So, no desire for karma, for fr no desire to gain material benefits, material comforts, luxuries, or to enjoy long life or heavenly comforts. And no desire for Jnana, no desire for liberation. So, Anya Bilasita Sunyam Jnana Karma Yamna Vrita Anuku Yena Krishna Nushilanam 
bhakti ruthamam. The highest devotion is that devotion which is just focused on anukuyena krishna nushilam. Just centered on Krishna, around Krishna. So we like to have all the activities in Krishna consciousness. So Bharat Maharaj, he got problems. He had to take birth as a deer because he became attached to the deer. Next life he became a deer. Now Prabhupada also describes, he said, similarly, in Vrindavan, sometimes saintly people they do something sinful del deliberately, they engage in some sinful activity. Next life, they have to take birth as a dog or as a pig or a monkey in the Dham, in Vrindavan, before they go back to Godhead. He said that is the result. So Bharat Maharaj, he got that result. He had to take birth as a deer. But he remembered his previous life. He remembered that he had left everything. But somehow he got attached to a deer. And the result was he had to become a deer for one lifetime. So even in that body of the deer, after taking birth as a deer, he, he very quickly left the home, left the the, the mother who had given birth and went to, uh, he went back to that holy place in Hardwar and he went back to the Gandaki and he would drink the water there and he would eat the remnants wherever there were great sages or yogis there. He would eat the remnants of their food and he would try to be near them. And of course, in, soon he gave up that body of the deer and then next life, he took birth in a Brahmana's family. He took birth as the youngest son of a Brahmana. So, being born in the Brahmana family, he was very careful because he could still remember his previous life. Prabhupada explains in the purport that this, this memory of his previous life came about because he'd done many sacrifices and because he'd also was he was a very advanced devotee he was actually almost on the level of bhava when he became attached to the deer so he had become a very very advanced in krishna consciousness but somehow he fell down he lost it all so he was able to remember his previous life so, when he became Yadbarat, the son of a Brahmana, he was very careful not to get entangled in the family life. And he would pretend, he would always do things different. Father would say, after you go to the toilet, wash your hands. So he would wash his hands, then go to the toilet. Father would say, eat with the right hand. He would eat with the left hand. So parents thought, oh, he's stupid. This son of ours is very stupid, he can't do anything right. So in this way they were not attached to him. So then he could leave home and he went home. He, he left the home and he was able to go out into the world. And Srimad Bhagavatam describes how one time he was even taken by some dacoits and they thought he would make a good sacrifice to Goddess Kali. And when they were going to sacrifice him to Goddess Kali, at that time Goddess Kali came, to, came and chopped off the heads of all the dacoits because the dacoits were going to chop off the head of Bharat, of Jad Bharat. Bharat Maharaj became Jad Bharat as the son of a Brahman and they were going to chop off his head and offer it to Goddess Kali. But Goddess Kali understood this Jad Bharat is always thinking of the Lord within his heart, that he's a great devotee. So Goddess Kali came and killed all these dacoits and protected Jad Bharat. And then the other pastime with Jad Bharat is carrying the palanquin of Maharaj Rahugan. Because Jad Bharat had a strong body, there was one king, Rahugan, 
who was being carried in a palanquin, was going to visit holy places. And so they saw Jadbarat had a strong body, they thought he would be good to help carry the king. But when he was carrying the palanquin, he was very careful not to step on any insects. So he would walk very slowly and carefully and it caused the king to get very disturbed that they couldn't carry the palanquin properly. So the king was going to beat Jadbarat and he challenged him. But then Jadbarat began to speak spiritual knowledge. He began to speak the highest philosophy. Maharaj Rahugan, when he heard Jadbarat speak, then he could understand that he was actually a self-realized soul, that he was fully enlightened, and, but he was disguising himself like an ordinary person. So Maharaj Rahugan took shelter of Jadbarat and heard all spiritual knowledge from him, described extensively in Srimad Bhagavatam. Here you have Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva. They've also been given memory of their past birth. Most people do not get memory. They're put into the bodies of trees or animals and they have no memory of their previous life because they never did anything pious. Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, their piety was they met Narada Muni, the mercy of Narada Muni. So that was Agyata Sukriti. We could call it the chance. The chance just by chance they met Narada Muni. They had no qualification to meet him, but they did they met him and he has been so kind to them, he put them into this situation. And now he's saying, let them become trees, and after they've been trees for a hundred years of the demigods, then they will see Lord Krishna's pastimes and they will be delivered and they will awaken their Krishna consciousness. So we'll hear more tomorrow. Are there any questions? Yeah? If we could remember our previous life, will it help us to be a better devotee? Well, I said there, there's some qualification before you can remember previous life. We do see there's some researchers, that some big professors do research in reincarnation, and there are, they discover many cases, young children, they remember their previous life. You know, little Giro remembers in her previous life, she was somebody's husband or she was married to somebody and she can remember her previous life. They don't remember for very long and it doesn't help them. Uh, what really helps people is to understand our responsibility as human beings to cultivate spiritual knowledge. Just like it was explained, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, they were demigods, they were devas. So devas have a big position in the universe, residents of the higher planets. They can understand the, some, they have some recognition, they, respect for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And they understand some ways that some of the duties, the standards of living in the heavenly planets, to be in the mode of goodness. So like that, there, there, there's some standards for people to remember previous lives. Ordinary people remember the previous life doesn't make, doesn't, doesn't help them, doesn't help them to become Krishna conscious. And people would just say, oh, 
don't believe in it. They don't want to believe in previous life. Many people say like that in Christianity, for example. They say initially in the Christian religion, reincarnation was in the Bible, but it was edited out. And the reason why it was edited out was because people thought, well, if we have a next life, then let me enjoy this life, I'll do whatever I like in this life, next life I can always become a devotee, next life I can serve God. So they thought the idea of reincarnation does not encourage people to be pious and to be religious because they'll, they'll think, well, not now, in the future, next life, I'll do it. So this is one problem. People think, you know, next life, next life. It's not urgent. Let me enjoy now and maybe I'll become a devotee in the future. No, Janani Vas Prabhu is explaining a quote. He said, Srila Prabhupada said, if we had to remember our previous life, it would be very difficult for us. And he gives the example, if we had to remember that in our previous life we were a king, and now this, this life we're a poverty-stricken beggar, then it would be very difficult for us. It would be very unbearable, it would be very painful for us. Similarly, if we had to remember previous life I was a pig, and they took me to the slaughterhouse and they cut me up and butchered me. <laughs> you know, it would be very painful to remember these. And also, like in the uh, heavenly planets, this is uh, uh, the light like this. So they can drink some liquors, they can uh, enjoy life. So why these two became so degraded? So, uh, so it means everybody there Okay, so the question is that there's enjoyment in the heavenly planets. We hear about people drinking liquor and enjoying. So there's enjoyment in the higher planets. Is, is it wrong for them to enjoy? Yeah, what, the, what made, made them degrade, become degraded? What, so then what happened that these two sons of Kuvera had become so degraded? Uh -huh. Hmm. Well, we heard in the, uh, previously how they had been associating with, with Lord Shiva, was it? They'd been associating with Lord Shiva? Or Lord Shiva is an associate of their father, Kuvera. And so by that arrangement, somehow they were able to enter into the uh, gardens where Lord Shiva would enjoy. They were not, well, we do hear about demigods sometimes doing, just like Indra, he has a problem also, sometimes he becomes uh, attracted to other women and he has an illicit connection with other women. So that is a problem. So even in the, in the higher planets, there is that tendency, because so much sense gratification is there in the higher planets, so the tendency is there, people will enjoy. Certainly it's said the higher planets, the residents of the higher planets are all much more beautiful and they're much more intelligent and they have all the yoga powers and cities. So they have a lot of facility to enjoy. 
so, but the position to enter into the higher planets is that people have to be pious. They have to have performed pious activities to take birth there in the higher planets. So they enter into the higher planets and they enjoy long life, yoga powers, beauty, everything. But if they abuse it, if they, like Nalakuvera and Manigriva, become degraded, then they're using up their pious activities and then they'll fall back down to the lower planets. They won't be able to remain there for long. That's one problem. What caused them to they, they still have, somehow they still had that some scar, that still some attraction there for material sense gratification. Of course, residents of higher planets, they have that. They want to enjoy. The, and, but generally they're pious. They don't get into the higher planets without being pious, without being, having a lot of good pious activities behind them. But still some desire. And sometimes you give a little, uh, you become a little lenient and you have a little sense gratification, then you want more sense gratification, you want more and more. And, and this way you get problems. And then we use up all our piety and then fall back down from the higher How do we know that when we are doing some, giving, maybe giving some charity, how can we be sure that it's devotional service and not some welfare activity? So devotees performing welfare activity, what the devotional service is based on giving things like prasadam. When we give people prasadam, that's a devotional activity. It's a loving exchange to give prasadam to devotees. Just like now in Mayapur at this time, so there's a little hardship for some people, well, not only here in Mayapur, all over the world. There's some hardship for people because people are not able, many people are not able to work. Many people have lost their jobs even. They can't go to work difficult for them to eat. So we have to try to help them, to encourage them in Krishna consciousness, and we do it by offering them prasadam, that we can give them prasadam. It's a loving exchange between one devotee and another. So you give a donation to people to help give prasadam? Yeah, that's bhakti, that's devotional service. Yes, for a materialistic person, is it better to do welfare activities than not to do anything? Yes, that is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. In chapter, I think it's chapter 12, Krishna is saying, if you can't do this, then do that. The highest is to think of Krishna all the time. If you can't think of Krishna all the time, then practice the regulated principles of Bhakti Yoga, and in this way you'll come to think of him. And if you can't practice the regulated principles of bhakti yoga, then try to work giving up the fruits of your work and give up the fruit of your work for Krishna, Krishna consciousness. But if you can't give them for Krishna consciousness, then give them up, give up the fruit of your work for some other people. Because by giving the results of your work away to others, by doing some welfare activity, charity, you will become detached 
And that detachment will help us to come to Krishna consciousness. So yes, it's good to do some welfare activity if you're not able to do devotional service. Oh, the question is, in order to become pure devotees, do we have to also experience great difficulties like so many other devotees underwent? Well, we don't know what is Krishna's plan. We have to surrender to Krishna. Now, some devotees, they may not get so much tests. They may not have so many difficulties. But some devotees may do. We don't know what is Krishna's plan. Prahlad Maharaj was put through many difficulties, but he didn't find them to be tests because he was always remembering Krishna. The Pandavas, of course, they had to go in exile for so many years. And Draupadi, she had to... her chastity was threatened. And so, yeah, devotees can suffer. They can be put through some tests. Haridas Thakur, beaten in 22 marketplaces. So it's not that everybody has to suffer like that. But sometimes Krishna arranges these things just to teach us the tolerance of the devotee. So we, we simply have to surrender and accept the shelter of Lord Krishna's lotus feet. That Krishna knows what is good for us. And yeah, the real test is going to come at the time of death. That test, that's a big test, the time of death. We have to remember Krishna. So we're preparing for that. So the question is saying that sometimes pure devotees live in great hardship and undergo very difficult situations. So this frightens people away from devotional service. New people, we hear of these things, they think, oh, I can't do that. So how can we guide these people? <laughs> so we have to be careful what we tell new people. We have to be careful what they hear. Uh, we don't want them to hear, we don't want to put too much emphasis on the lives of these great devotees who accepted voluntarily great hardship and underwent great difficulty. We want them to know that the devotees living in all kinds of conditions of life. The pure devotee can be in all kinds of conditions, just like in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time, some devotees were very rich. There was a king, Maharaj Prataparudra. He was very wealthy. He was a king. And somebody else is Kolaveka Sridhar. He's very poor. They're different devotees. It's not the same for everyone. So we have to make it clear to these new people that there's all different kinds of pure devotees. And some are rich and poor, some are very healthy, and some are very sick. They're living in all different conditions of life.
Prabhupada said, this life we are a scientist, next life you can become a scientist. You may become a scientist. But if the scientist is stud studying insects, if his science is all involved in the study of insects, then next life he may be thinking of insects, he may become an insect in his next life. So will he become a scientist or will he become an insect? So the question is, just like Bharat Maharaj, Bharat Maharaj was a yogi, he'd gone there, renounced, but his, his whole meditation, his whole concentration changed to the deer, contemplating the animal instead of his meditation. So as a scientist, your, your focus of attention should be not just simply the insect, but understanding the science itself. And the, behind the insect, we should think, how wonderful is the creator of the insects? You are studying the insects, the habits of the insects, the bodies of the insects. You should understand who designed these insects, who's behind that. So the, the original, the master of all science is Lord Krishna. He's the greatest scientist. He can, he cre can create all of these things. So we should understand the personality behind the science. That's important. So you can be Krishna conscious and also a scientist. Then you don't have to worry about becoming an insect. Thank you, Maharaj. From my age class, my teacher, Sapphire Peter, I, he said, why should Prabhupada says that a tree has no Uh -huh. Yeah, Prabhu's question is about the tree because Prabhupada mentions the tree have no consciousness, they don't feel pain when you cut them, but so he said that this is not true because we offer prayers to Tulsi when we pick her leaves that we beg her forgiveness because she, we know there is consciousness there in the plants. So there is consciousness in the trees but it's very covered. That's the point, that the consciousness is very different from the consciousness in the living and in, in, in the animal or in the human being. There's a very different consciousness, higher, much higher consciousness is in the, the animals and in the human being. Human being has the highest consciousness. So the trees have a very low consciousness. So Prabhupada said, just like no consciousness. And so much lower than other forms of life. That's the point. And when we cut the tree, the tree also feels something. Therefore, we don't cut the trees unnecessarily. At one time, I remember in the temple at Dallas, uh, there was a yard there and there was a big tree growing. So the tree was growing over the building. So one devotee decided to cut the tree. And when Prabhupada saw this, Prabhupada was very upset and he said, who told you to cut this tree? He said, you will suffer for this, cutting the tree. He said, you will have to suffer. So, uh, remember Krishna Balaram Mandir, there was a big tamal tree growing in the courtyard and at one point they were thinking to take it out, but Prabhupada said, no, just leave it, just leave it there, let it. And it grew very nicely for many years. Now it left the body, they put a new tree there. But it did grow, we let it grow, we, we left it to continue its life. So yes, we respect the life, we know the trees also have consciousness, but it's a low consciousness, much different from other. The Prabhupada said that the, uh, there is consciousness there in the tree, the jiva is
So Janani Vas Prabhu is explaining, uh, Prabhupada had explained that if, if, if you cut very low the tree, on the very low level if you cut the tree then it won't grow again. But if you cut the tree above, above a couple of feet, if you cut the tree above that, then they can grow again. Then they will continue to grow. But if you cut them too low, too near the root, then they won't grow again. So that's an indication how there's consciousness there. Okay. We give the example usually the tree will always move towards the light because the tree is like the light. So they, 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 if you put the tree in the shade, the tree will bend towards the light because they like to take the rays of the sun. That's an indication that they have consciousness. Really? <laughs> Janani Vas Prabhu is telling us how one astrologer had uh, predicted that because Mahatma Gandhi, before he left the body, he was always talking about British rule, British rule. Because in the times of Mahatma Gandhi, India was under the rule of the British. And Mahatma Gandhi was working to get the British out and to get independence for India. So he was, his whole mantra was British rule. He was constantly chanting British rule, British rule. You know, he wanted to end the British rule. So the result was when he died, next life, he, he became a ruler in Britain. <laughs> and he be, he said, maybe he took the body of somebody like the, the son of the Queen of England. Queen of England has one son, Prince Charles. <laughs> Maybe he was Mahatma Gandhi previously. Okay. Last question. Last question. Thank you for Guru's excellent class. Even which platform of Baba and so advanced when he completely abandoned his position as a king and all his opulence, family members, how he can be illusioned by material? Yeah, we, uh, okay, the question is that it seemed like he was, Bharat Maharaj was not experiencing the happiness of spiritual practice. He was more attracted to taking care of the deer. He was getting more pleasure from the deer than from his spiritual practice. And so we have to understand how important association is because Bharat Maharaj did not have association. He was alone and he allowed himself to get entangled with the deer. So trying to do spiritual practice on your own, you can have many bad habits. Nobody's there to tell you, to guide you, to protect you. So Bharat Maharaj didn't take, he didn't have any association. And the result was he got entangled, became attached to a deer, forgot everything. Maya is so powerful. So we have to be very careful and that's why association is so important to help us, to guard us, help us to protect ourselves from Maya. Okay? Hare Krishna.
Thank you very much. Srila, Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Gaur Primanandi.